Right, expenses during any stage of life can pile up quickly. That's why we go to work, right? We earn a paycheck. Yet when we retire, all we have is our savings and our investments to cover it all. Of course, we have a little help from Social Security and Medicare, but does that go as far as you think? Here with a reality check and some sound advice, Corey Sickles of Safe Harbor Retirement, the sponsor of this segment. Hi, Corey. Hi, Robin. You know, most of us realize we're going to need medical care, obviously, as we age, right? But medical care and long-term care are two different things. So what is the reality these days of somebody needing long-term care? Well, you know, if you really step back and think about it, if you're over, if you're 65, there's probably about a 70% chance that you're probably going to have some type of long-term care. So the, the odds are good. You know, people are living longer, uh, which which probably even means those rates or those those percentages are going to go up higher as you know this as the baby boomers, you know, actually age. age. Yeah. Yep. And it, of course, it's quite expensive. But but the one thing I would say, the huge misconception, is that Medicare is going to be able to pay for these type of cost. Mm -hmm. And uh, really the only thing that Medicare will pay for is what they call skilled type professionals, the physical therapist, things that we, can, that we would consider non-medical. Okay. Or, right? Right. So, um, so and, there, and the only thing they'll pay for is up to 90 days. So now if we start going into a long-term care facility and you know, that's even broad now, right? It's, right. You have assisted living. Now you can even actually have your own private room or maybe have a hospice or uh, one of the most common more than anything else right now is people taking care of their parents or taking care of someone as well. So we call that in, you know, in, in you know, in home type of care as well. Okay. So and that's included too. I mean, when you talk about long-term care, all of that is included. It, it can be. Yes. Okay. With the, with the new type of uh, policies that are out there or yeah. that you can actually get, it can actually take care of all that. The, the nice part about it is the way they're kind of designing some of these new products. Now you only, if you can't perform two of this with two of the six daily activities, like if you can't walk or you can't feed, then you can actually initiate these type of products. And, and Corey, I like like to talk about this still to um, men versus women. It used to always be right. Women live significantly longer. I mean, so are we looking at that still being the case that, you know, more women go into these long term care facilities? Well, I will say this, you know, in, in, in a lot of cases, uh, men do pass away first, right? Mm -hmm. But I mean, men average about a little over two, you know, about 2.2 years in some type of facility and women is about 3.3. So not a huge difference. It's, it's, not, it's yeah, not a okay. huge difference, but if you also add, you know, women do live longer, the odds are that spouse is probably going to be alone. It's not going to really have that other, you know, that other uh, person that they're married to to be there to help them as well. Do we know on average how long people typically spend in these facilities too? Because when you're going to uh, one of those, even like a memory care, which is super popular, right. you know, these days because of the demand for that, um, how long people stay in those? So what I would say is that like, if you know, if you want someone to say you want, first of all, someone to come in and take care of you, just on just just on a daily basis, you're probably looking around fifty thousand dollars. Okay. If you want assisted living in the Columbus area, it's, that's probably going to range anywhere from about sixty to a hundred thousand dollars for a private room. Then, of course, now when you get you, if you have Alzheimer's or something like that, you could be looking around ten thousand dollars a month. And you know, once someone goes into that type of uh, facility, you're probably looking at about fifteen percent of those people spend about two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for long-term care. All right, you said a big number, two or fifty. That's like a house, right? <laughs> right that you're exactly spending, right. you know, in a year or whatever it may be, a couple of years. So, how do you pay for that? Then, what do you suggest people do? Well, I think, well, like anything, it's always good to talk with an advisor because you know there are solutions out there to be able to be able to plan for that. You know, you know, if you if you lose two hundred fifty thousand dollars, that's going to be coming out of your retirement savings, mm -hmm. and it ha if it if it doesn't go in the right order. You know, say, say it's your spouse that, that spends all of your money for long-term care, that's going to put you in a situation later on where you're not, you know, now you might run out of money or have some type of financial issues. So what I would recommend is you, you really sit down with an advisor. We have a lot of different types of products where you can pay a lump sum, you know, for the long-term care, or maybe you pay, you know, you pay on an annual or a monthly basis for a period of time as well. Uh, the old days, you know, of long-term care used to be if you didn't use it, you lose it. Right. Yeah. And, and some people were afraid then to buy it. That's right. Exactly yeah. Right. Now the way the new products, are, they're also kind of tied into life insurance. So if you don't lose, you know, if you don't use it, then you at least have a death benefit. Okay. And there's some other benefits that you can get with that life insurance too, where you can actually 
have it for long-term care, potentially uh, have a death benefit, and, and if you design it the correct way, it could also p potentially be a tax-free income you know, for those individuals in retirement as well. All right, I think the key there is designing it the right way, which many of us can't do on our own, uh, which is why you always, of course, suggest, you know, meeting with someone, even getting a second opinion on things because, you know, financial experts know much more about this, especially yes. in retirement. So um, I want to let people know Corey does complimentary consultations. So you can give his team a call, the phone number, the website up on there on the screen. So, Corey, thank you. Thank you, Robin.